Hello, I'm Atu you're watching News Pass on Hornbill TV. In order to combat the menace of widespread availability and usage of drugs such as psychotropic substances and Indian-made foreign liquor, the Nagaland police had launched a campaign on January 11 to curb this danger that could pose to the youth here in Dimapur. The DCP crime board Lakshman spoke to Hornbill TV to shed a little light on this prevailing issue. Let's have a look at the details from our reporter Esther. CP Crime, Bharat Lakshman, who is also the PRO of the Dimapur Police. Uh, recently, the Nagaland Police has been uh, cracking down on a lot of drugs and IMFL seizures and uh, all over Nagaland in all districts. So we are going to be speaking about Dimapur with uh, Sir over here. So Sir, can you tell us how this uh, crackdown was decided uh, to happen and uh, Dimapur, the directive for Dimapur? Uh, see, uh, we received directives from our police headquarters. Mm, that there are <coughs> widespread reports about uh, use of psychotropic substances in Dimapur and even Nagaland also. So we are given strict directions from headquarters to take this uh, special drive, a month long drive to crack down on this menace uh, to save our youth from falling into this trap. <coughs> so it started on January 11th. Uh, and uh, sir, so uh, till now, how many cases have been registered and how many people have been arrested in Dimapur regarding this? See, as far as Dimapur is concerned, so far till today, we have registered 10 cases uh, regarding NDPS and IL, uh, uh, this thing, other cases. And we have arrested 10 persons also. Yeah. So these 10 people that have been arrested are all locals or are they also uh, transporting these drugs or liquor across the state or beyond the borders? Uh, see, actually uh, composition, uh, we don't actually go whether it's a local or non-local. We see criminal as a criminal. Him being a native or otherwise has no bearing on the case. Sir, and uh, does the Dimapur police, do they just check the check gates for all these uh, illegal uh, drugs and alcohol to uh, to check at the gates or are they also doing a thorough checking of in and around Dimapur town? Uh, see, even from beginning also, we used to uh, do it across the district. And now also this drive is not only limited to the check gates. We are doing it across the district uh, and every police station, actually in every police station we have formed a special enforcement committee in Dimapur which is headed by second in command of police station and comprising of three more personnel. So every police station in Dimapur, we have formed one enforcement committee to especially uh, go for this month long drive and which will be assisted by special units from the CP office. Uh, and what kind of drugs is being uh, you know, brought to Dimapur, you would say? What kind of drugs is mostly, what is the average uh, number of drugs, I mean, or the type of drug? that is mostly being seized over here? Uh, see, mostly ganja is one of the this thing, a substance which is illegally transported from this route. Apart from that, nowadays we are seeing in, uh, spike in the cases of brown sugar. And uh, there is uh, one drug called Yaba, Yaba tablets. It comes in the form of tablet. Uh, it comes mostly from Myanmar. And apart from that, SP capsules, nitrosin, uh, so these are the common type of drugs which we uh, um, find uh, being transported from here or being used in the Dimapur. So what is the next step after the seizure of these drugs apart from um, destroying? We have seen uh, time and again that the excise department does destroy a lot of IMFL and all that. So as the police also, uh, when it comes to drugs, what is the next step after seizure? Uh, see, legally, once we seize a drug, uh, so what we have to do, we forward it to the court, honorable court. From there we draw samples and we send it to the for forensic laboratories to ascertain whether it has the prohibited content or otherwise. Once it is ascertained, then uh, as per the direction of honorable court, uh, it is destroyed. <coughs> and also, uh, what is the sentence of a person caught with drugs and then found guilty of all this? Uh, uh, it, does it depend on the amount of drugs and all? When you have seized it, that person may be, let's say, a truck driver or something transporting. What do you think is the sentence for such guilty? Uh, see, uh, in India, we have got something called NDPS Act, which is one of the most stringent act in the country we have. Of course, uh, we have varying amount of punishment 
depending on the quantity as you are rightly uh, pointed out so there is something called commercial quantity and there is something called small quantity so depending on that uh, quantity punishment is there and we have very uh, high punishment under the ndps act and sir uh, would you say there are a lot of users of all these drugs in dimapur uh, have they been also caught apart from the sellers are buyers also in the arrested numbers uh, see as far as ndps is concerned so both sellers and buyers and those who are transporting it all are uh, criminal in the eyes of law uh, however i think the you know this this is a very wide spread and uh, it, it's a multidisciplinary approach we need for this enforcement is only one aspect of it you have to do awareness about uh, how it is harmful to the society i think civil society has a larger role to play in this apart from the medical department we have to go for rehabilitation also so we are not just seeing the drug users as the accused we also see them as the victims and we want to help them we think this is a, a very a serious problem it needs a comprehensive approach and we are not uh, looking at this from only one perspective or only one lens we also see the users as victim as well so so uh, coming to that then uh, in connection to that when you see these users uh, and are victims you would say after being caught with these drugs uh, and for usage is the police also making the post uh, you know arrest better for them or in a sense referring them to certain counseling or rehab uh, see we have certain ngos which are working in this area so as far as rehabilitation of course they are, uh, they are also doing their part from police perspective uh, our job is basically um, to arrest the accused and to crack down on the network whether uh the backward linkages and forward linkages from where it is coming source how it is being transported the route it is uh, taking and the destination so we generally go with this uh, uh, direction when we investigate the drug cases but of course we do uh, in, um involve the ngos honorable court also sometimes give directions for that uh, particular aspect so i think uh, criminal justice system is very well aware that it is not one sided problem it has to be looked from multiple angles okay uh in the report of the crackdown of uh, the uh, this whole drug and uh, alcohol crackdown so so um you, uh, the nagaland police had said that if anybody has information of selling a uh, people selling either drugs or alcohol to come forward so in the mapo itself have people come forward to give information about such sale of drugs or alcohol be it uh, in and around the commercial hub uh see actually um we have given in a press also uh, from our police headquarters unfortunately we are not getting uh, much input on that but it's, it's not very uh, discouraging also we have got some reports and we are very thankful to the um, citizens of dimapur for coming forward with the information and wherever we have received information from our public we are also to discuss on this matter we'll be joined by our senior news analyst l from the newsroom thank you so much l for joining us today moving on with this uh, discussion no i just want to know psychotropic drugs and substances like cannabis are now seen uh, used widely by especially by the modern youths do you think that the new cultural trends to be blamed uh, are to be blamed for the availability of the wide number of drug options yeah in a way it's both yes and no or to uh, uh we talked about globalization earlier during the uh, earlier in the 90s and the early uh, 2000s with the internet and with the global brands coming into the state or in the country and with the introduction of new media platforms and then social media i think we were introduced to a very wide range of drug options so of course there are cultural reasons too there are reasons of education there are political reasons too as well but i wouldn't really blame a single movement or a single cultural movement that might have impacted a greater choice for the use to actually choose drugs or alcoholism in this regard but yes i would certainly say that the internet and the new media platforms they have they have 
uh, enabled youth to have a clear picture of the options of what you call pleasure out there to engage in and this could be in the form of drugs this could be in the form of alcoholism and unfortunately it has been normalized uh, to pick we have picnics where we talk about cannabis or we have heard about people using cannabis we have parties where people use cannabis so it's normalized to an extent so somehow the mystic of drugs the fear and the mystic of using drugs has been demystified and it has been normalized so youth are more willing to engage in these options more yes also when it comes to intake of illegal drugs as such do you think it has increased over the years or do you think in the previous years it was just not out in the light or it was not much spoken of what's oh, your yeah. view on that yeah uh, that was an ex uh, une unexpected question uh, too <laughs> yeah um the first the first ever synthetic drug was the coral hydrate it was introduced or uh, most, most precisely, it was created in 1869. But drug use is not a new thing. Uh, to it has been there for uh, thousands of years. Actually, cannabis was found in the Western civilization, uh, in the Eastern civilization, way back 8,000 BC. So, drugs or alcoholism is not a new thing. Uh, but if we are to look at the measure of how much drug use has grown, I think it will be a little impossible right now um, because we are talking, I talking about drug use, its increase or decrease from a historical perspective here. We cannot have data from the, for example, 8000 BC till 2022. But uh, what the Central for, Center for Disease Control is saying is that uh, drug use, for instance, this year, uh, the past year and this year increased uh, increased to 13 percent due due to the pandemic, and it caused a lot. Uh, the pandemic caused a lot of stress among young people, so somehow they were pushed into places where they would be distracted, and drugs somehow gave them the distraction distraction that they needed. Uh, to. Uh, what about uh, us talking about in the Nagaland context, in the context of Nagaland? We do know, uh, according to the data that we have, it started in the year in, in 1880s, or I mean 1980s, but do you think it has increased over the years, the usage of drugs? Uh, right now, I do not have ready, uh, ready data in, in that regard, Atu. All right, also moving on, uh, talking about the NLTP Act, uh, shifting the attention from drugs to also including alcohol here. Now, the government of Nagaland is uh, considering a partial implementation of the NLTP Act. So what will uh, actually partial implementation look like? Uh, yes, way back November 2021, the state government of Nagaland, they were considering uh, partially implementing the Act which means like you implement only a part of it with certain regulation here now there are two options here are uh, to either you implement it fully down to the letter or either you uh, or you lift it entirely so there are only two options anything else is regulating it so now the government is choosing the third option they want to regulate it so uh, in the context of Naglen, and when you talk about partially implementing the uh, Naglen Liquor Total Pro Prohibition Act, you're talking about regulating it. So, if you want to regulate it, if you want to implement it partially, it means that you are going to give out licenses to a select few from the community who will be who will be licensed to, say, stock or sell liquor. So that is that is how partial implementation works. So I believe that uh, the government, if they if they actually implement it partially, then they will be choosing uh, some from the community from whom like they can engage in a business of stocking and selling liquor. So that will be partial implementation or two. All right. I'll also, um, what are the tools society and also the government can employ to curb drug use among the youths? Could you give us some ideas on that as well? Uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a complex. This is a complex problem that uh, that has no single one-stop solution. Uh, to the family, the society, the schools, the government, and the police authorities, they all have a role to play. That is not exclusive to itself. It is not a one-stop solution. In fact, all the roles they have to play is connected to the other. So um, it's, it's a very complex issue that demands uh, a very complex solution. So what right now what we have is the only tools we have is uh, education, 
we have uh, enforcement. So education and enforcement will have to work together. For instance, I'll give you a small uh, small example of it. If the say police authorities they enforce the act thoroughly and they actually minimize the inflow of drugs in the state, let's say. It means that the flow of drugs into the community and into the schools and among the youth will be minimized. So if the inflow of drugs or alcoholism is minimized, it gives the family again, in turn, a greater space for them to educate their children about the pros and cons of using drugs. and. So when you educate the children, then it means we have productive children, talented children who can actually divert their energy to productive channels, sports, music, writing, uh, even working for the community and society. So it, this in turn cre creates productive children. So when you have productive children and the talent pool in the community, community increases, then that's where the government comes in, let's say, with employment opportunities to use and harness those talents. So each of the roles of family, the police, the government, the society have to play. They are all interdependent on one another. There is no one-stop solution. All should work together here too. Alright, that's all we have for the discussion on this topic. Thank you so much for joining us.